YouTube, today I have a history lesson for you all. I did a deep dive this week. Jazz Chisholm has had a very unfortunate season. He's battled injuries. He's been very inconsistent when healthy, mostly because of said injuries. And so I wondered, is there an MLB The Show cover curse? You think that would be a pretty obvious answer to just null off the top of the dome. But in the past handful of years, some of the cover options, or cover choices rather, really haven't had great seasons. But to truly understand if there is a curse, kind of like the Madden cover curse, I went back in time. I went back and researched every single MLB The Show cover athlete and looked at the year and how he performed when he was on the cover of the game. And the results will shock you. Not really. But the results, we're going we're to talk about them here. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Whiteboard Wednesday. If you're new here, welcome to your first Whiteboard Wednesday. This is the MLB The Show series where there's no gameplay. It's just me, these markers, this whiteboard, and this eraser that uh, leaves smudges all over my whiteboard. In this series, every Wednesday, we talk about MLB The Show comedy, because the game is comedy, and we talk about some stuff. We, we learn things, we find things out, and uh, we share the knowledge. So without further ado, let's do a deep dive on MLB The Show cover athletes. Before MLB The Show was called MLB The Show, it was just called MLB. Started with MLB 98, went all the way through MLB 2006. And these were the cover athletes on those games. I did not do the deep dive on these people. I did the deep dive when it started to be called MLB The Show. But it's important to at least recognize that they've done some pretty decent jobs picking cover athletes. Out of this list, Bernie Williams, Cal Ripken Jr., Mo Vaughn, Chipper Jones, Andrew Jones, Barry Bonds, Sean Green, Eric Chavez, and Vlad Sr., all those players had pretty respectable careers. I, you know, argue maybe that the outliers here are Mo Vaughn, Sean Green, and Eric Chavez, but it's not like they're no names. We've heard of these people. They've had great seasons and accomplished great things. There is no curse to be had when 989 Sports was doing MLB 98 through MLB 2006. When 989 Sports rebranded as San Diego Studio, they also rebranded the game. It was no longer just MLB and then a year. It was MLB A Year, The Show. So MLB 06, The Show, was David Ortiz on the cover, and he was an absolute monster in 2006. As a Yankee fan, it was harrowing, really, to witness most of this come against us. 54 homers, a career high. 199 walks. That's a metric shit ton of walks. A career high. 355 total bases, another career high. Oh, and only second best in his career with an OPS of 1.049. David Ortiz was not cursed at all by being on the very first cover of the game when it was called The Show. For many, this is one of the most iconic MLB The Show covers. I don't know why, but it sticks in my memory. David Wright was on the cover in 2007, and what did David Wright do? He proceeded to finish his highest ever in the MVP voting in fourth place. He had 30 homers, 107 RBI, and a career-high 325 batting average. David Wright's career did really, really come to a screeching halt with unfortunate back and neck injuries. But it didn't happen in 2007, so I'm not calling this a curse. Phillies legend Ryan Howard, a new legend to MLB The Show last year, uh, proceeded to hit the cover off the ball in 2008 when he was on the cover of the show. He led Major League Baseball in homers. I just threw my marker. I've retrieved it. He led MLB in homers with 48, RBIs with 146, and he played every single game there was to be played. Durability issues, injuries, and really bad performances hampered the end of Ryan Howard's career. But his peak was one of the best peaks in the history of Major League Baseball. You're going to think that's Cap. It's not Cap. Look up his peak. It's insane. But Ryan Howard did kind of fall off a cliff towards the end of his career. The curse, non-existent here, though. In 2009, we had Dustin Pedroia on the cover. Now, Dustin Pedroia's name right now, looking back at it, maybe isn't as sexy as some of these other names. He had some injury issues at the end of his career as well. Not a problem in 2009, though. Dustin Pedroia led Major League Baseball in runs. He had a largely very successful season. He couldn't quite replicate his 2008 MVP season, which was largely a catalyst as to why he was on the cover of this year's game. But Dustin Pedroia still had a very, very respectful career. Respectful probably doesn't even begin to cover it. Dustin Pedroia's 2009 season just wasn't one of his best. That doesn't mean it was one of his worst. It was just kind of another season. But still, not enough to qualify as a curse. Joe Maurer hit a ludicrous 365 in 2009, and then he became the first ever two-time cover athlete of MLB The Show. He was on the cover in 10 and 11. We'll talk about 11 in a second. But in 2010, Joe Maurer was great again. He hit a career-high 43 doubles, and his batting average declined to 327, 402, 469 on the rest of the slash line. Just an excellent season, one of the best offensive catchers of all time. It's unfortunate how his career ended with a lot of injury problems, but again, 
No curse in 2010. 2011 was really the first year, at least in the show era, that the cover athlete didn't perform. Joe Maurer only played in 82 games because of leg weakness, and they couldn't quite figure out what it was until eventually they found out it was from a very rare viral infection that was just sapping his lower body of strength. So it's not surprising that he then only hit 287, because you need your legs and your hips to swing that, swing that stick. Uh, and that was his lowest batting average up to that point in his career. Still, props to Joe Maurer for being on the cover two years in a row. And this was not a curse here. This was a fluke thing, a rare viral infection. I don't know. I don't think that's a curse. His Kaiju series card in be The Show 23 is also a literal cheat code. And I love it forever. And I'm going to be so sad when set two is gone. I might wildcard it. I'm being serious. Adrian Gonzalez might be one of the best pure hitters from this period in baseball history that everyone kind of forgets about, maybe. 2012 was kind of a weird year for Agon. Wasn't bad by any stretch. But it was kind of strange. He was traded partway through the season from Boston to the Dodgers. He ended up having a career-high 47 doubles, but he only had warning track power. There was no other power that came along with that because the slugging first baseman hit a whopping 18 home runs in 2012. I'm not saying MLB The Show's cover athlete curse was the problem here, but it was kind of weird. SDS looked like frickin' geniuses by putting Andrew McCutcheon on the cover because he literally won MVP in the year in which he was on the cover. He won the MVP award because of a career-high 38 doubles, a 9-11 OPS, and kind of a lackluster National League field around him, but that's not Andrew McCutcheon's problem, that's everybody else's problem. Maybe instead of a curse, MLB The Show cover athletes just kind of start losing power in the year in which they're on the cover. I don't know. Maybe. You guys can dig into the science. Hire John Brenkus of ESPN Sports Science to get on it. Miguel Cabrera in 2014 was the MLB leader in doubles with 52. He also only had 25 home runs. It broke a six-year streak. Or is that a seven-year streak? Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. I can't count. Broke a seven-year streak of having at least 30 home runs in every season. Does this mean Miguel Cabrera is bad? No. He was quite excellent but he started losing some of that pop. Now we're starting to enter the realm of what the hell was SDS thinking? Yasiel Puig was on the cover in MLB The Show 15. Excuse me, MLB 15 The Show. We're almost at another rebrand. Yasiel Puig only played in 79 games because of a right hamstring injury. He had 11 homers, 38 RBI, and what ended up being a career worst 255 batting average. Now Yasiel Puig has had an, uh, an interesting career, uh, an interesting life as a human off the field. Some of his actions are probably not great. And his antics on the field are loved by some, hated by most. So this was a very weird year for MLB The Show. I'm sure they'd like to just look past it entirely, but now it's gonna live forever in this video on the internet. SDS is rebranded again. Now it is what we know and love, MLB The Show 16. It was Josh Donaldson, an electric player during his heyday with the Blue Jays. I wish he looked like a quarter of that player now, for my Yankees. But in 2016, Josh Donaldson tied his career high with 122 runs scored. Largely a product of his teammates knocking him in, I understand that, but he did hit 37 bombs, so he knocked himself in 37 times, 99 RBI, and a career high 953 OPS. Josh Donaldson, in the year he was on the cover, was pretty damn good. We don't have to talk about MLB The Show 17, because it was a legend cover. It was Ken Griffey Jr. on the cover. He probably played golf and did some cool stuff. So this was no curse, good for Ken Griffey Jr. This is now the point in the video where I will explain that their remaining covers are only going to be the standard edition covers. This is kind of when SDS started to toy a little bit with legend covers like Jackie Robinson, Derek Jeter. We're not doing that, we're just doing standard editions for obvious reasons. Following a record-setting rookie season, Aaron Judge was on the cover in 2018. And by golly gosh, it was such an unfortunate follow-up to that 52 home run rookie season. He was struck on the right wrist by, a, I believe it was a Jordan Lyles fastball. Fractured uh, the, the ball of his wrist, I believe it's called. He only played 112 games, so it was hard for him to replicate the power numbers. He did still have 27 homers and 67 RBI, but just as a Yankee fan, I can remember watching this season. And even when he came back, he didn't always look right. The wrist was really affecting him, so this season was kind of yucky. Bryce Harper in 2019 had an overall strong and healthy season. This cover, unfortunately, was one of the most boring in MLB The Show history because if you recall, during this offseason, we didn't know where Bryce Harper was gonna play. So he did the entire marketing campaign for this game in street clothes because we didn't know what team he was gonna be on, so it was difficult to brand. Doesn't matter though, in his first season with the Phillies, a career high 114 RBI, a career high 573 at bats, and for somebody who gets injured quite a bit, it's not his fault, he just plays really hard, but someone who gets injured as often as he does, it's a lot of at bats. So overall, a great season. 
for Bryce Harper. This very well might have been the beginning of the big, steep, precipitous decline of Javier Baez's career. He's probably still young enough to pick himself back up again, but he has not been the same since the 2020 season when he was on the cover of MLB The Show 20. Now, it was the pandemic season. There's a lot of weird stuff going on. Preparation was weird, conditions were weird, things were weird. But he only played 59 games because of the pandemic. A lot of people, I think they only played 60 to begin with, so he was right up there. But in 59 games, he only hit 203. And his 238 on base percentage was the lowest of all qualified National League hitters. Not good. He struck out 75 times in 222 at-bats. He's always struck out a lot, but that is ridiculous. That's more than a third of the time. Believe it or not, 2021, at least at the time of this recording, was the only time Fernando Tatis Jr. was ever an All-Star. I think he deserves to be in this year's All-Star game. They have not announced replacements yet. I, I think he's going to get in, but at least at time of recording, this was the only All-Star appearance of his career. He played in only 130 games, but still hit 42 home runs. He had a lot of ding-dongs. The stuff started to spiral out of control after that. 2022, he didn't play at all. He hurt himself, and then steroids in his butt. Not good. In 2023, he's back and looks like he's the same player he was pre-steroids. So... You be the judge. Drop my marker again. Uh, MLB The Show 22 with Shohei Otani. I think we can move on. And now we arrive at the present. MLB The Show 23, a super cool cover concept, a super cool theme, a super cool person. Jazz Chisholm is great. I'd love if he could stay on the field because he is truly electric and exciting. But he's only played 45 games to date. There is still time to come back this season. Of course, it is only July. He has had problematic turf toe issues, he just strained his oblique, and he's back on the IL now. Reports say three to four weeks at minimum, but the Marlins don't seem incredibly optimistic. But the Marlins are good. Shocker. So, if they're still competing in a few months, and they need Jazz back, they're going to run him back out there on the field. And maybe there's still time to salvage some of that cover season. And the verdict here at the end of this week's Whiteboard Wednesday is that there is no curse. However, I do think SDS needs to do a better job vetting their cover athletes in the next few years because it's been a very back and forth, inconsistent, will they, won't they, good, bad, indifferent cover really since Yasiel Puig in 2015. Let's just put the surefire stars on the cover. Show me Pete Alonso. Maybe let's get our first pitcher on there, Justin Verlander or Max Scherzer before they retire. Show it to me. Show me cool stuff. I also know I just named three Mets. There was really no reason to do that. They just were on the top of my head. But that'll do it for this week's Whiteboard Wednesday, everybody. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe before you go. And I'll see you in next week's Whiteboard Wednesday.